And welcome back, rugby fans, to Rugby 411. As always, I'm your host. My name is Joshua Shibata. And what a week of rugby action we just had with week 11 of the 2024 season. This is, of course, our power ranking episode of our Rugby 411 YouTube channel. But boy, what a shakeup we had this week. A couple of videos ago, I mentioned that uh, there was a lot of shaking going on. This was like an earthquake, totally destroyed the board and just messed it. It's almost like the board fell over like it's done before on this channel and all the pieces have been kind of jumbled up for the majority of it. Um, it is an amazing, amazing uh, series of events that just happened. This week there are five games. Four of those five games were determined by less than three points at least. Um, a, quite a few upsets though. Upsets, if you determine it by rankings of who's playing against who and the overall standings, not necessarily upsets because I called a couple of them, which, by the way, we'll go over my Super Bowl picks. I'm on a roll for the very first time in a long time uh, this season. But um, there were a lot of technically lower-ranking teams, even on my power rankings, defeating the upper-ranking teams, which, of course, has led to, as I mentioned, a whole lot of, mis of, a lot of changes in in the power rankings. Uh, again, if you've never seen my power rankings episode, this is based purely on what goes on the pitch, what teams are facing what teams. If you are beating a team that is higher ranking than you, you obviously will shoot up the power ranking. If you are a higher ranking team losing to a team that's lower ranking, which again, that happened this last week, uh, you will be falling pretty far down. Uh, if you are putting on points on a team that is a lower ranking team and you're already a higher ranking team, Technically, you shouldn't be moving too much up, but a lot of things happened this week that made me have had to move a team, even though I felt, you know, their win was kind of, you had to have happen. But um, yeah, there was a lot of, this was a really hard week, guys, to determine who should go where. I, I even made a last second change as I was going over my notes. Uh, I, I switched two teams and I'll let you know which two teams they were. Um, cause I re looked at my notes on the game and I felt maybe the teams that I had should be switched back, but man, it, it took a while to kind of figure out where teams go. And I'll be honest. Um, I I'm happy with the results, but I, I, I'm honestly, I wouldn't be mad if a couple of teams on other people's rankings, because there are, they are out there floating around, um, are a little bit switched because, again, there, there was a lot of changes going on this week. So uh, without further ado, let's get through it. I again, the one team that didn't change, other than the two teams that were on by, the one team that unfortunately is staying put where they are at the bottom, Anthem Rugby Carolina, ARC sits at number 12, still at number 12, still winless for the season, losing to Houston, Surprisingly, going against arguably the best team in the league right now, uh, losing to them only 15-38. to 38. And I say only because, again, uh, so far Anthem has lost to some teams, and those teams have put on 50-plus points on them. Uh, Houston, I don't believe, had their best team to face against Carolina. But uh, again, Carolina did not necessarily look too bad facing off against the best team in the league right now. Um, you know, at the very beginning, Houston scored five tries right from the very start. Uh, and I think maybe that's what kind of caused Houston to kind of take the foot off the gas. 33 to three by halftime. But then, you know, again, 33 to three at halftime, Houston puts up 12 more points. Um, I mean, Carolina puts up 12 points. Houston only puts up five. So if you compare the halves, Carolina did better in the second half. A uh, try scored by Josh Shelter is the highlight for Carolina. Um, again, Josh Shelter, a very talented guy. I really do like how he's been playing. He is USA eligible to be an Eagle. I definitely have high hopes and think that he would be a future superstar to keep your eyes out for in uh, Anthem Rugby Carolina. But again, losing to Houston 38-15, to not much more to say about this game. So we are moving on. Number 11. The first of uh, technically an upset, but I kind of called this one, Utah slides down from number seven all the way to number 11, losing to the Miami Sharks 19 
to 20. Yes, it was a very close game, but to be honest, uh, not as close a game as the scoreboard will let you know. Um, there were quite a few uh, penalty cards in this game. Utah, uh, Utah had one red card and one yellow card. Miami had three yellow cards of their own, so five cards total in just one game. Now, granted, uh, this season, some commentators were saying in Major League Rugby, has, this has been the most penalized season out of all seven years of Major League Rugby so far. And it's not even, it, we're just barely past the halfway point, but already this season is the most carded season um, I've been talking to a lot of Major League Rugby pundits and um, experts, and it is interesting how much the league has really been snapping on to making a lot of penalty calls, kind of having their officials really make a lot of calls and cards given out. Don't know if it's for the better. Obviously, we are looking for the safety of, of players and everything, but... Man, a lot of cards have been given out, and a lot of suspensions have been given out as well. Uh, this game ha was really, really sloppy between Miami and Utah in the first 20 minutes until finally uh, Miami started scoring, and they, they pretty much unloaded on Utah uh, 17 points before the halftime. So Miami was up 17-0 at the half, okay? So just, just remember that. And then the second half, it was all Utah. Utah putting up a lot of points. Now, granted, there were a bunch of cards, as I mentioned, that were given out. There was a fight that broke out in the in the game that caused Utah to get the red card. Miami get a yellow card. Utah then got a second yellow card. So they were down two men, of uh, 13 men to 15 at one point. But amazingly, Utah's defense kept it to that. Miami was only able to score one penalty goal. And then with five minutes left, Utah was able to score a try. Miami then got a second yellow card and then a third yellow card, which resulted in a penalty try, which allowed Miami to get, uh, which allowed Utah to get within one. But then uh, Miami was able to hold on and keep Utah out of it. Uh, and Miami was able to sneak away with the win. Uh, even though Miami's performance wasn't necessarily the best, I felt that, again, Utah losing to, at one point, was the second worst team in the, my power rankings. I felt that Utah did have to slide quite a bit, and Miami did move but uh, uh, quite a bit. But, you know, on the overall, because of all how all the other teams moved around, I don't feel Miami moved as high as they could have with, a win that they almost lost, if not for the fact that Utah did kind of fell asleep at the very first half. Utah is dealing with a lot of injuries. They are kind of limping through the rest of the season, which is unfortunate because Utah was starting pretty hot as the season started, but now they are kind of falling apart. And as I mentioned before, in rugby, especially Major League Rugby, it is a game of, of just trying to persevere as long as you can uh, endure as much as you can and just try to have the best team uh you know the most put together team at the very end of, of capable players because a lot of injuries do stack up um it's a game of attrition and unfortunately utah is kind of falling apart right now as we are getting close to the end of the season now two teams that fought a pretty good and close game uh, it was a really exciting game for, of course, an L.A. fan. Uh, L.A. and Dallas played in Dallas. L.A. came away with the win, 29-26. to It was a very close game. So in the end, Dallas slides down from number 6 down to number 10. And L.A. moves up from number 10, up a spot to number 9. Um, again, as much as I would love for L.A. to move a little bit higher... Um, you know, I, I felt that it was a very, very close game. L.A. had to come from behind in this game, and they barely pulled it off. Um, I'll go a little bit more into details of the game in a second. So that warranted L.A. just to move. Uh, actually, they moved a couple spots. They were at number 11. They moved a couple spots, and Dallas fell down just, um, uh, they fell down just a little bit behind L.A. Because, again, Dallas was number 6. L.A. was number 11. It does warrant that 
Dallas does fall quite a bit, and they were home as well. Uh, LA had to go over to Dallas to beat them there, but it was a pretty good game. Speaking of cards, unfortunate LA is the most penalized team going into Week 11 in the league. 16 yellow cards. That's just yellow cards. Uh, it's not even red cards um, in it involved. 16 yellow cards. The next team to have as the, the next highest yellow carded team only has eight. So LA is twice as many yellow cards as the second highest yellow carded team. Um, so that says a lot about this game with uh, with LA. Yeah, LA starts off with a really great, a beautiful uh, kick chase try by Hooker Ben Strang to take the lead at, at the beginning. Unfortunately, Dallas with Dewal Kotze. Dewal Kotze is such a try scoring machine. Scores a try. I believe that was his uh, 11th try. I'll look it up in just a second. His 10th try. His 10th try leading the league so far this year. Uh, but then LA follows right back with Jason Dom, who had a, a great performance in this game. He did his own Dewal Cote uh, impersonation by scoring a try off of a mall. LA was really dominant in the set pieces. Their lineout was great. Their mall was pushing Dallas away. Uh, Dallas did look like they were a team that was dealing with some injuries themselves. Most noticeably, not on the in the team was Sam Gala. They're very star talented. Uh, last year's rookie of the year. Unfortunately, not able to play this game. And LA just really pushed Dallas around. Lineouts were really bad for uh, Dallas as well. LA stole quite a few lineouts. In the end, uh, in the second half, Dallas um, capitalized on a red card. That unfortunately for LA, Jason Emery, Jason Ewok Emery got. Um, I didn't see the play live. I saw it on the replay. <sighs> You be the judge. They they call the uh, Jason Emery red card for tackling a player off the ball. Basically, after a pass, the player that supposedly might have gotten the ball, it was kind of a dummy pass, so it didn't go to the player. Jason ended up tackling. Actually, it looked more like Jason just kind of ran into the other player. Unfortunately, that player didn't have the ball. In rugby, unlike football, you can't hit anybody or touch anybody unless they actually have the ball in their possession. Otherwise, you cannot touch them. And because Jason did technically hit the other guy, it, it, apparently it was head-to-head -head collision. Jason Emery got a red card. Unfortunately, it was reviewed by Major League Rugby. He now has a three-game suspension. Again, kind of a BS call, in my opinion. Very similar to Andrew Coe call that was a couple weeks ago. But what can you do? So with a red card, Dallas was able to capitalize uh, with two tries of their own. Uh, Dallas ended up getting a red card, but unfortunately, LA wasn't able to do anything with that. LA, though, did come back after falling behind with a beautiful uh, two tries for Jason Dom for the hat trick. He had a phenomenal performance, getting the game tied up. And then, unfortunately, Dan Holland said, Mr. Reliable for LA was unfortunately had to be carted, not carted off, but carried off of the field with an injury. But that allowed, just added onto the roster, Former Seattle uh, Seawolves player, one of the top sc uh, point scoring players last season, Jordan Chait, goes on to the pitch. First time he was able to suit up with LA because he was dealing with a shoulder injury. Comes in with the clutch performance, kicks the game winning penalty kick with time off of the clock. Beautiful. It was almost a repeat performance of the Dallas win in the very first week where they took the win away from L.A. with a uh, last-second dropkick goal. So L.A. able to get some revenge on it. But Jordan Chape, brilliant performance coming right off of the bench. Uh, he was 2-for-2 two two off the tee. Five points came in admirably to replace Dan Holland. Said a great addition to the team. Very glad to have him on the squad. So L.A. getting their second win of the season. Moving up to number nine. Uh, as I mentioned before, moving up a couple of spots from number 10 to number 8 are the Miami Sharks after beating the Utah Warriors in a very close game. Now, here is one of the upsets that I definitely did not see coming. Old Glory, D.C., defeating the Chicago Hounds 22-21. to Man, what an upset game. Old Glory only have won one game before going into Week 11. Now, granted, they've tied two games, 
but only with one win, taking on a team that was looking like a world beater, the Chicago Hounds, finally putting together and able to knock down Chicago. Um, it was kind of a weird game uh, for, the, for the most part. In the end, Old Glory scored very quick. Uh, five minutes in the game, they scored really quick. And um, it, it was a little bit of back and forth. Uh, Old Glory got a couple of penalty kicks. It was a very defensive game. In the end, Chicago was able to score two tries in the first half to be up 14-13 to 13 in the first half. Then in the second half, it was really all a kicking game. Old Glory was able to put three penalty kicks together to take the lead 22-14. to 14. With only about a couple minutes left in the game, Chicago was finally able to score a try. And with three minutes left, you, uh, Old Glory was able to hold on to keep the game out of Chicago's hands, 22-21. to 21. Again, it wasn't a dominating performance by Old Glory. Uh, Chicago was, was barely there to, be, to try to keep the win in their court. But um, that's why, in the end, I originally had Old Glory ahead of Chicago. But after kind of looking at my notes, Old Glory kind of barely won the game. And Chicago, I feel just, for whatever reason, kind of just slipped. So, of course, Chicago does fall from number two. But instead of having them drown in number seven, I actually kept them in front of Old Glory at number six. So I switched these two. Originally, I had Old Glory ahead of Chicago. But I feel that Chicago still gets a little bit of a push ahead because of how well they've been doing lately. Old Glory does get to co-op, though. Uh, originally, Old Glory was number nine. So they moved up a couple spots to number seven. But um, I still will give Chicago a benefit of the doubt of keeping them just slightly ahead of Old Glory. Now, one of two teams that were on by, so they get to stay put, the San Diego Legion at number five. And then we'll just skip ahead to number three is the other team that was on by your reigning defending MLR Champions New League of Free Jacks. So now, the next game, and this was, I felt, even a bigger upset. Uh, and I don't believe in a Super Bowl anybody picked this outcome, but in the end, the NOLA Gold defeating your two-time, two-time MLR champions, the Seattle Seawolves, 32-31, to 31, allowing the NOLA Gold to move up to the number two spot, and Seattle sliding down to the number four spot. I believe this is the biggest jump so far this year. Uh, NOLA going all the way from number eight, to the number two, defeating a top team like Seattle in a you know in a pretty good game. Um, Seattle scored two tries at the very beginning of the game within the twenty minutes. Uh, Nola got a try back, but then they got their own yellow card against them. Again, a lot of cards being handed out even this week. Uh, Seattle was able to capitalize on that yellow card by scoring a try, another try of their own. So they were ahead at the half, twenty four to ten. Ahead at the half. 24 to 10, mind you. In the second half, it was all Nola. Nola scoring two tries right off the bat. Uh, one of them by Jonah Mau, who is a, has been a phenomenal player for the Nola Gold, former football player, transferring over to rugby. His first year with Nola Gold, he's been scoring quite a few tries. Uh, Seattle got another yellow card, which allowed Nola to score another try, and that was a brace by Kalen Bochar. Seattle was able to score a, a last-minute try by Devon De Rosso to get back within one point. With three minutes left in the game, they were almost able to score near the very end of the pitch, but unfortunately, Nola was able to get the turnover, completing the shutdown, and able to walk away with the win, 32-31. to A great performance by the NOLA Gold, and that's why I thought that they deserved to move up as high as they were. Uh, you know, it kind of helps that you have two teams that are on by that I don't feel comfortable moving up or down. I'm not big on moving teams that are on by. So New England stays at number three, San Diego stays at number five. That allowed NOLA to move up. Seattle slides down to number four. And uh, a big shout-out to Mac Mason for Seattle. Even though Mac Mason had a performing, uh, f phenomenal game, four for four off of the tee, he scored 107 points so far this season. The first player to break the 100 points in this season so far. He's had a phenomenal performance. Unfortunately, Seattle just a little short. But that means you have a new number one team sliding up 
from number four to number one because of all the movement of all the other teams, Houston Sabercats are number one, which again is kind of apropos because right now Houston is the best team, hands down, in the league. Um, the only team with only one loss. Everybody else has at least a couple. Houston is looking like a world beater. Uh, and a surprise for me, because I definitely did not pick Houston to be the team uh, to be as dominant as they have been so far in the Western Conference. Uh, looking at the standings, and not looking at my power rings, but looking at the standings, I'm actually kind of surprised. Uh, New England has kind of taken away the Eastern Conference, as I expected. But I am actually really shocked that the 2, 3, and 4 spot between NOLA, Old Glory, and Miami, uh, I'm sorry, Old Glory, Chicago, Old Glory, and Miami, they're only separated by each other by about 6 points. So it's really anybody's game for those last couple of playoff spots. Western Conference, of course, is a dogfight between Houston, Seattle, San Diego, and Dallas, uh, LA, and... Um, LA, uh, I'm sorry, Houston, Seattle, San Diego, and Dallas, LA, and Utah are kind of fighting with Dallas for that last spot, but kind of far behind, to be honest. So it's it's still anybody's game going into these last few, few weeks as we head into the playoffs. And like I said, it really is going to be about the team with the most completed team with the least amount of injuries that will probably get through to the playoffs. But very, very interesting to see how this played out with NOLA so high. Um, but we still have a couple of really strong Western Conference teams. But these Conference is uh, kind of moving up. And you're starting to see some of the West Con uh, Western Conference teams that are near the bottom sliding dangerously down uh, in my power rankings. Now, let's talk about Super Brew real quick as I grab my notes over here. So, with the Super Brew... Uh, let's see how the results were, and bam! So congratulations to my good buddy, USA League and Union Rugby fan. Uh, he got the golden cap this time, but you know it was a tough week for everybody. 14.5 points possible to get, and uh, USA League and Union Rugby fan only got 5.5, and that's the top score. Not taking away anything from my buddy Coop. But uh, it, it was a tough week for everybody. But Cooper, man, you got you at least got you know the top spot. So congratulations to you. Coming in second, another good friend of mine, Frisco Flame, five points, and then you're truly tied for three with Theo God for four point five, and then Harry coming in at the very end with four. Uh, Leon unfortunately got the wooden spoon once again this week. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the overall rankings because for whatever reason, at the time that I'm making this video, uh, the Super Brew Rugby uh, app is recalibrating for whatever reason. So unfortunately, was not able to get any of those results. I think it's just because I've been doing pretty well so far <laughs> lately that it kind of broke the machine. So I'm sorry, guys. But uh, again, we're still going after whoever has the best ranking overall at the end of the season gets that uh, MLR t-shirt of their choice, of the team of their choice, courtesy of yours truly. So again, still a lot to play for. Um, so make sure you don't miss out on any of the picks because every point is going to matter. So that is my video. Uh, again, if you look, so many teams have moved. I think this is the first time this season and first time in a long time that literally outside of the two teams that are by, only one team stayed put, everybody else, uh, nine other teams moved on the board. And it's, uh, it's man, <laughs> it's all jumbled up. So it's pretty exciting. So once again, thank you very much for checking out my video. I, of course, appreciate your support. Let me know what you think about my power rankings, who you think should be up, who you think should be down. Are you happy with what I put down? Is your team one of the top four? Is your team, unfortunately, one of the bottom four teams and you're not happy about it. But again, there's still a lot of rugby left over. So any of these teams can still make their way up in the power rankings. And you just need to get into the eights to technically make it into the playoffs. So we'll see how that turns out. But anyways, thank you once again for checking out my video. I appreciate the support and I'll see you on the pitch.